My guest today is Hatan Shabukshi. Hatan, how are you, my friend? Good, thank you. How are you doing, David? I'm doing really well. I was thinking back to the day we met in Las Vegas, Nevada, oh gosh, 10 years ago? Probably more that? at this point. It was probably more, more than that. I can't but yeah. remember. I've been yeah. with Microsoft almost eight years. It was before then. I know that. Wow. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> Time flies. Hat. It does, absolutely. Um, and uh, you've You've gone on to great things since then. You're working Thank every you. time I, I want to know a new technology, I just call a time because chances are he's been diving into it. Thank what are you, you diving into these days? So these days I've been working a lot on CI C D for for infrastructure as code. Mm -hmm. Um you know, so just a lot of really awesome pipelines and a variety of different orchestrators, really really looking for ways where we can help folks automate the actual creation of of pipelines for 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 terraform and a lot of bash just been writing a ton of bash code so terraform right i see the sign behind you terraform go and bash I, I do um, I do like to kind of put that up there just to remind me of what I'm working on for the day, you know. So I wake up, I go, you know, sit in my office, I go, that's what I'll be working on today. <laughs> Excellent. Tell me about Bash. Now, Bash has been around a really long time. Uh, it it just came from the Linux world, right? And it's yes, for sure. fairly recently moved to Windows. So it is on Windows, but it still runs in the context of the Windows subsystem for Linux. So, so it's still a a a Linux implementation, though 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 it can be built into um, Windows as well. And when we think about Bash, there. There are really two se two separate things that folks call that folks call Bash. W one is the actual Bash shell itself. It's the shell that y that y that you would launch as a you know kind of an you know kind of an al an al alternative to the Windows to the Windows command prompt or the actual or the actual PowerShell prompt. Right. So so that's, you know, one thing. The other, and, you know, this is what I spend most of my time on th um, these days, is the bash scripting l um, l um, l um, language itself. So, you know, f uh, these are files that essentially end in .sh, and you can use them to kind of build um, small shell scripts or, you know, scripts to basically help you automate your workflow. With that said, I've been writing some fairly complex scripts. I mean, we've got one that's 3,000 lines long, and it's fairly long as far as a bash script. And uh, we've seen a lot of interesting patterns, S some good, some not so good, but we found ways to make the not so good good and that's what i would like to share with you today oh yeah I, you know you say scripting and when someone says a scripting language i think of it as simpler than a general purpose language like c sharp or java for example and that it and by simple i often think it shouldn't be 3000 lines long but maybe that's not the so, purpose of it yeah and i mean i think that 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 is an absolutely v v um, valid line of thinking for sure. But in some use cases, you may have const um, constraints where you might not be able to run C Sharp or .NET or, or Java. At and you may be forced to use an actual script, um, um, scripting language just just based on the runtime. Mm -hmm. With that, with with that said, a few popular languages, just like Python, for example, is technically considered an actual um, um, scripting language, yeah. but it still works, and you could still build some fairly robust apps in 
our case, this was for an actual custom framework that we worked on. And what began as a simple ins install script of, hey, put this here, put this there, quickly turned into a very big thing because we had to support multiple work streams, multiple scenarios. If you're on one cloud, it's got to behave this way. If you're in a different, um, if you're in a different cloud, it's got to behave that way. So, so you know, even with with simple target use cases, you can quickly get into a situation where there's just a lot of com complexity underneath. All right. Well, tell me about some of the patterns, some of the features. Of sure. That you've been able to implement. Okay, sure. So you know, so um, you know, just to kind of backtrack a bit, one thing we've you know found is that folks will just often create a dot a dot sh um, um, script, put just you know they would essentially enter the same the same commands they would put into the um, CLI and just use that and that's a very valid thing and th and they would invoke it using the actual bash keyword so the very first thing I'll say is to look up a thing called a bash a, um, a bash sh a bash shebang which is essentially a line that you would put at the very top of a um, of a bash script that w that will instruct the actual op that will instruct the actual op um, operating system and say when this file is invoked this is how I want like this is the actual interpreter I want you to use to basically run this file so it's really cool because you no longer have to um, you know run the you know bash script using a dot um, using the bash um, um, CLI key word and what is even cool um, what is even cooler I think is you don't even have to have a dot a dot sh file extension you hmm. can you can um, you can literally build a tool called foo as long as the actual sh um, sh um, shebang is there at the very top of your file I can now just invoke foo as if it were an um, executable, and the actual operating system will just run your f your file. It's a really neat way to build little 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 helper utilities that look like full full blown executables, and mm -hmm. I make use of this feature quite a bit, and and in fact. There are multiple ways you can write the actual shebang file. And at the end of the day, really, it's just an actual comment you put at the top of your file. And, um, and to be perfectly clear, multiple, um, like, um, th um, this works across multiple, um, l um, languages also. Bash, Node.js, there's a few, um, there are a few languages which actually use this, but it's really useful in the Bash world as well. So that's one. That's you know what. That's one of my tips. Okay. An actual. Shebang, just I just looked it up. It is yep. the the number sign or the pound sign or the hash exactly. behind that. This thing, followed by an exclamation point, followed by the essentially the interpreter you're going to use. Exactly. Like slash so bin, slash bash was one of them. Exactly, and and the actual um, re, um, re, um, recommended way in the in the Bash world is to um, use slash um, 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 slash user bin or um, user bin and Bash, and that is a little bit more of an actual portable way to do that but it's very useful so that's my first tip absolutely useful second tip is one not to do what 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 i said i did which is one super long file with 
3,000 lines of actual bash code, it's actually good to kind of break things up into multiple files. And I'll in fact go this route even on a small script just because I'm looking for ways that I can build reusable libraries in bash. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is you can actually move code into a separate file just like you can in C sharp, just like you can in 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 Java, the way that you would essentially import that in using um, um, using Bash is to actually source the files. So there is an actual keyword called source. You can just so um, um, you can just source that file. So that will essentially um, import in all of the functions and the code in the um, file that that you are basically sourcing in so that's a really useful way to kind of break up the you know the you know the you know code itself and it's really cool in that you can start to think about building re re reusable libraries for for bash yeah I that's a principle i've applied in other languages as well um, Absolutely. Not only does it make it give you the option for reusable code, but it also simplifies your code. Lots of small components are Absolutely. easier to understand. Lots of small components that have clearly defined interfaces are easier to understand, they're easier to test, they're easier to deploy. Um, I'm not sure if this is relevant for Bash, but they're easier to scale separately. Things like yeah. that. There's a lot of advantages. Ab, abs, abs, absolutely. And, you know, when it comes to bash itself um, scaling is often not a big thing but just to get it to a point where it's easy to main to maintain easy yeah. to understand is a big thing as well yeah it helps with uh, team development also team development. If you and I are working on the same 7,000 line file that creates conflict uh, but if we have just we're each working on two separate parts of it in separate files that makes it a lot easier absolutely absolutely um and it also makes it easier to kind of take some reusable assets and to basically share that so that if you're working on multiple bash scripts or you know multiple bash tools you could essentially have a re a reusable set of lot of uh, of libraries that you can that you can basically br that you can basically bring in and that's going to lead to my next point which is um, there are a, there are quite a few useful libraries at, um, out there one is by an actual company called called Gruntwork. They have a set of bash tools called bash commons. And these are a bunch of files that you could essentially um, source into your uh, bash script. And it just and they basically give you a bunch of really useful ut utilities, really good really good stuff there is one library i think is really useful as well but this is a sh a shameless self 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 plug because it's one that um i wrote that is called shargh and it's a way to basically simplify argument parsing in bash so so th uh that's on my github and i'll send you a link yes please and i'll send you a link um david but it's a really easy way to essentially pat um to essentially parse arguments into bash scripts bash scripts can be pretty hard when it comes to parsing input it's a thing that i see people google quite a bit it's a thing that i myself have to go look up every time i want to go parse arg arguments shr makes it super easy to just kind of source a file say here is the actual input that i expect and here is the variable that i want you to put the value in so it's i've actually found it to be super useful and that's why i decided i want to make this into a reusable thing that i can share what does that yep. mean to source a file 
uh, that means import a file. So that's how you would in in include other libraries and you know um, tools. Yep. So um, yeah. So let's see. So next thing on my list is to um, unit test. And I know that in a lot of other languages. We all know that we should be writing unit tests. We should be writing in t integration tests. When it comes to bash scripts, I see the, that folks tend to skip over that because, like, well, it's just a simple script. I still find that there's a lot of 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 value when it comes to writing tests. And and one of the hard things about about Bashes, it can be somewhat hard to actually um, unit test the stuff because it's it's a it's a little bit um, the actual you know the actual scripting language itself is a little bit different than some larger um, object oriented l l um, languages like C sharp or Java. With that said. We found a really great tool. There is an actual library out there called ShellSpec. ShellSpec is a is a unit testing framework for Bash, and I mean it's actually more of a BDD style f f um, f um, f um, framework, and it actually uses a um, custom DSL language that That's looks very similar language yes sir that looks very si very similar to gherkin if you've used that before so it's a very descriptive way of writing tests in the sense of it's the the goal is to build tests that sound a lot like the it, or or that look like the um, the um, English language so that non devs can write tests as well with that s with that said it does exercise bash um, bash um, bash scripts under the hood and you can if you want to write your own Cut your own, cut your own custom bash functions there, as kind of a setup teardown also. And the thing that I really really like is you can also write this in a way where if you wanted to mock bash bash functions, you absolutely you um, absolutely could as well. So like one really good example is I have an actual bash script that makes a call to an API because it's got to go get an actual token. I can basically mock that in my test so that I don't go fetch that live and I could just use a faked mocked value in my test. It's It's been really great and it's really helped us find kind of edge cases as we're writing more advanced bash, um, bash scripts. Yeah, I like that idea of mocking because uh, the bash scripts that I've written almost always are designed to manipulate some external resource. That's the whole point of it. So they necessarily exactly. have dependencies. If yeah, that's exactly. Part of, a piece of that script that doesn't involve the dependencies, then you sort of have to give a lot of setup to it without mocking. Egg. Exactly, and the one thing I like about shell spec is it makes that whole thing easier. So that as long as your 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 it your your interaction is in a bash um is in a bash function, then it actually makes it um you know makes it easier to basically mock out which is really um really really useful which i think l leads into my next thing as well which is to make heavy use of bash functions i see a lot of folks just kind of write an actual bash script as just a a series of 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 separate um 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 commands whereas i i found it incredibly useful to basically use as many functions as you can break things into separate functions and just really have the main body of your 
um, script essentially invoke those functions. So that 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 um that's how I I tend to write bash scripts now. I will actually have a main function in there, and I'll have a bunch of other a a bunch of other helper functions and at the very bottom of of my script I'll just invoke I'll just invoke main and just say run this thing which is very different to how I see a lot of bash scripts but it it's really nice in that it one makes it easier to test two breaks your code up into smaller chunks yeah this is the same uh reasoning behind splitting things into multiple files, even within the exactly. same files, uh, organize these into smaller uh, components with clearly defined interfaces. It simplifies it. There's exactly. actually, uh, I read a book that actually has the math involved in that. Now. How many oh, nice. magnitude? <laughs> it, that's uh, awesome. Increased it by. Wow, uh, that, redu that reduce, is really cool. Say, reduce the complexity by. That is really cool. Yeah, if um, you could share that book, that would be awesome. I'll Thank you. It was a few years ago. All good, all good, David. So, but with that said, one thing I will warn folks about with writing bash functions is bash functions do have a return keyword, but it only returns integers. Interesting. So you can only return status codes, essentially. So, you know, z um, zero for success, non-zero for failures. Now, with that said, there is a way to grab strings from an actual bash function, and that's what you tend to do most of the time. And the way to do that essentially is via an actual echo command, which is how you would basically print things on to the screen. So in a function, you basically you basically echo out a string value, and the way that you you call the function is by basically capturing that string and you would assign that into a variable so that's just you know one thing that 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 you know to be quite fair does take a little bit of getting used to but once you do it's not that it's not that bad it's just one of the small constraints when you're writing bash in this um in this particular style but i do still think it's still worth it because it makes your code easier to read and yeah so and i think i have two more things well it's you know it's really one thing with two separate parts um there are there are things called bash shell options so when you're writing an actual bash script there is an actual keyword called set and you can use set to basically enable certain features so like there's a set dash e there's a set dash u and the and the and the two that i would really call out is the dash e and the dash u and i need to go look this up just to make just to make sure that i get this um that i get this right and i have it right here so with a dash e once you've got that there, that that ensures that your bash script will fail if one of your sub sub um, sub commands has an actual error, and that is a really useful thing because by by default, if you call a a a a separate CLI tool. And it and it's got a non-zero return code. Like you know, let's say you call, for example, you know, let's say you call, for example, Terraform, and you get a non-zero return code. By default, Bash is not going to throw an actual error and is not going to exit. It's just going to say, "Okay, cool, this thing failed." keep on um keep on going if you include a dash e it'll actually stop at that point and go wait a minute this thing through an um error st um, st um stop execution i i um i think that's a really good i i idea there are some legitimate um use cases where you don't want to where you don't want to do that but that's more of the edge case to be 
to be quite honest. I feel like in most cases you want to you want to you want to um stop when there's an actual um when there's an actual error. So okay. so that's one. Two, when you're using the dash the um the um dash u that will require that you declare all of your v um v um variables before you actually y use them that's a really good idea as well just because it kind of makes you think about stuff and if you accidentally typo a name of a variable it'll basically ca um ca catch that because the way bash works is you don't have to declare an actual vi um, v um, v um, variable even though there is a a declare keyword you can just kind of um, use a variable anytime you want and by hmm. default it'll just automatically create one now where this can become troublesome is if you accidentally typo the name of a variable it'll just go okay you know here's a new thing you want i'm just going to make one for you and right. that can lead to all kinds of weird 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 behavior if you're using a dash u that kind of for, that kind of for, that kind of forces the bash the bash um the bash scripting um um language into saying what what um wait a minute you did not you did not declare this so i'm going to essentially exit out so i would highly recommend folks um use that so yeah i think yeah, that's I, um, that's what that i got reminds on my me list. of the option explicit command yes from my visual yes. basic days oh my god ago. i had completely forgotten about that <laughs> why do you have to remind me david <laughs> no you love me with nightmares tonight <laughs> <laughs> oh god yes yes it's very it's very similar to that and that was the you know first thing folks did in fact i know it's the first thing i did back yeah. you know when i wrote vb also the very first thing i did is i would just add options exp explicit at the top so yeah uh, I like it. This is um, this is a lot of stuff. We're we're almost at time. Awesome. But um, where can people go to learn more about Bash and some of these features you're talking about? Sure. So I will share a few links with you. There are some really great art articles out there as as far as best practices things i've shared and you know more than that but yeah there's a few to to tutorials out there i unfortunately don't don't have a single write-up i could share but i will see what i can do <laughs> not yet very well done maybe i will do that after this call and i'll you know share that with you david uh, Tom, thank you so much for your time. You stay Anytime, safe. sir. You too, sir. Take care. Have a good one. Use GitHub, a great place to work on technology with your friends.